This is the fifth video in a big series all about mapping out and practicing melodic arpeggio guitar shapes on the guitar. In this video, we are going to work on the minor seven chord. It's one of my favorite ones. It's gonna sound really cool. It's amazing to know this stuff. We're gonna learn five different shapes, five different arpeggio shapes, chord tone shapes, five different positions of playing the minor seven chord broken up just the individual notes of it all over the fretboard and it's going to be really fun this is amazing for technique practice for targeting chord tones when we're improvising for composing melodies for understanding music theory on the fretboard so many things i have a free download if you want to follow along it has all the chord tones all the arpeggio shapes from this lesson and all the lessons in this series it's my chord tone vocabulary pack just use the link in the top of the description to get that also there's a link down there of a playlist to all the videos in this whole series. In this video, I'm just going to demonstrate up and down how I want you to be able to play these minor seven arpeggio guitar shapes in five positions. Then I'm going to go through and explain the exact fingering that I recommend for practicing them. And then we're just going to improvise with each of those shapes a little bit. The improvising on this chord sounds really cool because it's almost a pentatonic scale. It's one note shy of a pentatonic scale. It's going to be fun. Good stuff to practice. Let's do it. <laughs> Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar and musicianship topics, all designed to help us gain more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. All right, so we're gonna go over the five things to do for every chord tone arpeggio form that you wanna improvise over and feel really confident about, really uh, express yourself with. Uh, so we're going to do the five arpeggio shapes of minor seven. We're going to do all of them off of C and I'm going to show you the five steps that you can work on with each of those shapes. The first thing is just to outline it from the root to the root. You're going to repeat and pause on each of the roots lowest to the next root. You pause there and repeat. Don't pause or repeat anywhere else. So what we're doing with all the arpeggio shapes in this whole series. I'll do that one more time. Okay, the fingering is just very straightforward because it's all just third position. So all your fingers are just lined up with third, fourth, fifth, and sixth fret. No, sh no shifting positions or anything there. So that's pretty straightforward. The next thing we always want to be able to do, and I'm going through this with all of these chord tone forms in this whole series. The next thing, step two, is that we want to use a melodic pattern. And the one I'm recommending uh, here, but really you can break up the the arpeggio shape any way you want. But the way I'm the one I'm recommending is this. That's it. That's the pattern. You do that off of each of the chord tones. So you go da -de -do, the next chord tone. Do -de -do, da -de -do, da -de -do, da -de -do. Okay, end it however you want. You go from lowest all the way up and all the way back down. So you go up to the next chord tone and back down. So that is step two, that we always want to map things out that way. The point of that is that we're just working on not seeing only in maze view, not seeing only what is coming next because we only practice something in order. We want to break it up in some kind of way. It's also useful and melodic to use in our real playing, but it's also just part of mapping it out. Step three is also part of mapping it out, and that's what we now want to improvise just with constant notes so we're not distracted by thinking it should sound great or anything yet. And you can get a little creative with it, that's fine. Groove a little bit, but you're just kind of just reviewing the vocabulary all over the place. If you're going up and down, that's fine, but if you're only going up and down like this, then you're not really doing it right. Then you're just going up and down the, the, the arpeggio shape. You can go up and down a little spot and then break away from it or try to jump around a little bit. You could do it nice and slow. When you're just repeating a couple notes or three in a row, I call that treading water. I talked about that in a previous lesson in this series. You do that while you think about, okay, where are the other notes? Because this is part of mapping it out, okay? So we want to know it so well. You can do it nice and slow and really jump around. How well do you see all of your options? You need to be able to see them crystal clear. Step four is to improvise in a way that feels musical to you, that it's, you're actually trying to say something musical. Chord tones only. We want the limitation. We should be able to do something 
creative with it that feels good, that feels expressive, even though it's limited. Uh, but try to do something. It's all about the rhythm and the phrasing now. <laughs> So we want to kind of react to what we played before, repeat a lot of ideas, start multiple ideas the same way and end them differently or end uh, on the root a lot. Stuff like that is going to help a lot. I talked about it in the other videos of this series too. But just play around and try to be musical, even if you're... Even if you're just exploring a little more, but that kind of pausing, phrasing, and being intentional about, the fr about your rhythmic relationship between what you played before and what you're about to play. That's a big part of it. So. <laughs> the accidental note there. That's okay. So a lot of ending on the root just to really solidify. You don't have to do that, but if but if that's kind of new to you, uh, it's a great way to to get into it. Mm -hmm. So the fifth step is to add whatever notes you want around uh, around the chord tone notes. Any note can work. You are the artist. You are an artist. You play guitar, you're playing things, trying to feel good about what you played. You just explore now. You have these solid notes. You have these home base notes. And then how can you go away from them and come back to them? The better you can see these and know them and feel them, the, the quote unquote good notes, these home base notes, the easier it is to explore away from it and do something very creative or explore just other tones and colors. Um, if you want to think scales, that's okay, but you don't have to. And you kind of can explore a lot of scales. You could use the pentatonic scale around this. This arpeggio form is only one note shy of a minor pentatonic scale. So of course. But when you play these other notes, these scales or whatever, knowing that you can kind of start on and come back to these these consonant notes that sit with the chord, uh, that's where we can feel safe getting more and more um, exploratory with things. So uh, you could do the blues scale. You could do Dorian. And that's not the point of this lesson. The point is anything works. So you can actually just say, well, what about this note? And do I like it? Well, if you just sit on it like that, maybe not. Uh, so you might want to say, well, how can it be used? Because every note can be used. Oh, well, if it passed through, easily. Sounds great. Okay, if I play the loop here. You could do the weirdest things. <laughs> it got really out, right? But then because I know exactly where I can any moment start going back to chord tones, it's really safe to get weird. I'll do that again. Right, there's this moment of like, uh-oh, what is going on? Where, why are they doing that? What's that sound? I'm not saying you want to get that weird with it. I do that on purpose. I try to have a very, I try to sound as out as possible just as one of the tricks up my sleeve, and then get back into chord tones. But also just nice notes around things, notes in between chord tones. So that's on you in terms of you You have the foundation now. You have the skeleton. You have th this 
basis to work anything else around and that's where you are the artist because you get to just say oh how do i like that well if you like it or not go back to a home base note and kind of rethink things um and try again repeat the same thing avoid it next time if you don't like it that kind of thing uh, that is really the power of this at the same time we want to have that that fourth step and that third step where also chord tones only we should be able to make something that that we like if we can't, those extra notes are not going to make it better for us. We need the phrasing and the feel to be good and then get it and know the map so well that we can explore out from there. Okay, those are the five steps uh, that we want to do with any arpeggio form if we want to sound good and feel good improvising over any chord type. We're going to do those five steps much more quickly now through the other four arpeggio shapes of minor seven all off of C. Uh, let's go through those. All right, here's the next arpeggio shape for C minor seven. <laughs> With that root to root approach, we're gonna do fourth finger, second finger, first finger, fourth, first. Four, two, one, four, one. Reach over to finger three here. Shift over, don't stretch and, and cause tension. Then pinky, first, pinky on the top. So finger four, finger one, finger four, finger three. Then over to one and everything is in fifth position from there. So sometimes I like to just run up and down it as well, but at the very least, if you're gonna do it one way, do it with the root to root thing. Okay, and then yeah. I just don't wanna to add too many things to the list, but you can create your own variety for, you know, always. We tend to do that naturally, right? Just adapt things to, to play around with it and, and explore ways to get it down uh, further. So of course, just up and down fully is great. But if we only did that, we would sometimes uh, lose sight of where the root is and, and what is what, and not here it is clearly. So that's step one as usual, and then we're gonna do the pattern. Work that out until you can do that, that's step two. Step three is our constant arpeggio, uh, just improvisation, chord tone improvisation. Slow quarter notes is fine. I like to do this sometimes, kind of have a pedal tone drone note that I go back to a bunch. Whoops, not chord tone there. Okay, then we're gonna try to do a f musical phrasing with it. Right, again, our goal is to make it sound like, like it's a melody where we could say, oh, that could be a song, or someone says, what song is that? Even though it's just chord tones. Uh, very limiting and fun challenge to try to get a melody coming out of that. Then we're gonna add notes. Just explore around. What do you like? What do you not like? Remember, if you don't like something, it's more about how it was placed, where it was placed rhythmically uh, and context. If, totally fair if you don't like something, it's, you know, but it can work in some kind of way if it's placed in the right context. You still don't have to like it, but it's possible for it to sound okay. Let's play around with that. just play around with those flavors and that's step five moving on to the next arpeggio shape it's 
it's likely you're going to be tempted to add this note to this one because it's that's the note that's missing from it just being a pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic scale. So uh, avoid that temptation and feel like, okay, these are just the minor seven chord tones. Uh, then do the pattern. Okay, that's step two. Then step three is to just improvise. We're gonna do a lot of kind of finger rolls here well, on those two strings at least. Uh, that first finger roll. All the fingering position is just on fret eight position. But when you are improvising, you can shift around. Because this is about just using them and not about locking us into anything. Okay, then you try to do something melodic. Etc. Play around, try to make something musical out of it. I know I'm going through all of these with every position, but I don't want to ever tell you to do something without demonstrating it myself. So I just want to walk through like we're hanging out and just just showing you stuff on the guitar here. So we're gonna do the last step here and then two more of the arpeggio forms. That last step is then finding how other notes fit in. And again, if you wanna think of scales, that's fine. But now you know where all the chord tones are in a really solid way. And that's where you can, your jumping off points, your resting points. So I did just a whole Dorian scale. But then added a chromatic note just to the root there. You can just do blues scale here too. Okay, moving on. I did a video on hybrid picking a bit ago, like what I was just having a top note drone, play notes underneath. Stevie Ray Vaughan does that kind of thing a lot. I'll put a link to that hybrid picking video in the description. Okay, so fourth string has the root, the lowest root here. Okay, I'll do that again. pattern. Okay, and then step three is just improv constant notes. Okay, step four is try to do a melody out of it. really really uh just slow and careful and thoughtful about about my melody you can also just kind of go more haphazardly and just but your goal is to be musical mm -hmm. 
Again, I'm kind of targeting the root at the end of the phrases because it just sounds like a conclusion to an idea. So then explore around with those extra notes. So you hear some of those blues scale ideas in there, but I'm not just like sticking to the blues scale. And that's the beauty of doing it this way, where I'm not just saying, use this scale or this scale or this scale. And you can definitely think about switching between scales uh, if you know a few that work over a minor seven chord or any type of chord. Uh, but I'm saying anything and everything works. So it's quite seamless to just play around with any notes that fit in around the, the chord. So this is what it might sound like to just really just explore. Like, oh, could that note work? Okay, could this note work? All right, let's do the last arpeggio form. Okay, here's the last one. Okay, so I'm in 12th position here. Pinky, middle finger, first finger, pinky again. Use the inchworm technique. We're con contracting our position inward. Uh, so then we can come out and having shift positions on the other side. First finger, pinky, third, pinky, first. Contract inward, so we're using pinky. And then over here to first, middle, pinky, middle, pinky. Step one, then the pattern. Okay, or any other patterns you might want to play with for that, then uh, just improvise. Nice and slow, whatever you need. Until you really just see it super clearly see where all the notes are then we'll try to do something musical with it i love doing this sweep when i have three notes on uh cascading along three separate adjacent strings i just love doing that you'll hear me do that a lot so yeah using that in my little kind of phrasing practice, and then you're gonna search around for adding notes. And of course, what you're gonna start to see is that the same little areas where you can add notes exist in every single arpeggio form or scale form or position, because if this is the root and this is the flat three, well, well that same thing, well, and then five is here or four is here. That like shape, one flat three five, well that's in every single one of the arpeggio forms. One flat three five is in this one, one flat three five is in this one. It's, uh, this one is just a little bit different because of the tuning, but then it's in this one. So, so if you like the sound of using some of those chromatic notes, then, It's gonna work in any of those spots. Right, just playing around the chord tones. All right, that's it for minor seven. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. And like I said, I just, I wanna demonstrate everything that I recommend you doing. So I'm doing all five steps on all five arpeggio forms. That's what we're doing for this whole series. And I just wanna be loose with it and just sit and kind of jam and improvise uh, to inspire you to uh, to work towards that. So you can get really comfortable. This this There's a lot you can do, but these five things will help you get towards that place of just improvising over any chord, uh, chord tone form, any arpeggio, any chord type. So we're going to do more chords in the series and looking forward to more. Definitely get my free download that goes along with this whole series. The chord tone vocabulary pack shows all the melodic arpeggio guitar shapes that we're talking about here and in every video. This is just 
essential vocabulary stuff to know on the guitar, especially for improvising. That's why I'm doing this whole series. So use the link in the top of the description to get that or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. Hit that like button if you liked this lesson. I post a new lesson every week. Next week we're doing the half diminished chord, the minor seven flat five chord. So it's gonna get more interesting. This is kind of where people often uh, start dropping off in terms of mapping out their chord tone vocabulary on the guitar, half diminished chord, getting into some more kind of complex, interesting sounding chords. So very worth doing. We'll do that in the next video next week. Looking forward to seeing you there. Take care. Thanks for watching and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.